Today I'm going to tell you the story of why I got an African passport. And while not everyone watching this should also get an African passport, I'm going to lay out the case for a continent that will develop over the next century might not be a bad thing to have in your passport portfolio. We talk at Nomad Capitals about having more than one passport, and I really think you want to have more than two passports. You want to understand what's happening in the world to drive where you have the ability to live and where you have the ability to be a citizen. Today, I'm going to tell you how Africa might play a role for some people's passport plan. So I'm first going to tell you the happenstance of how I kind of stumbled into this African passport and talk about the greater citizenship by investment process in general. I think there's a few lessons that I learned. And as you know, Nomad Capitalist as a business has largely been instructed by some of the the struggles uh, that I've been through at things like getting second passports, things like opening other bank accounts in my quest to build my freedom, protect my assets, uh, reduce my taxes. So what happened was I signed up with the company and said, hey, uh, basically, you know, send us some leads, mention us in some of your articles. This is many, many, many years ago. Mention us on nomadcapitalist.com and we will contribute towards your getting one of these citizenship by investments. And the initial approach was, uh, hey, we'll do a Caribbean citizenship by investment and it's going to cost you $100,000. We'll cover the fees. You pay the $100,000 and we'll pay a, a chunk of that. Back then, there was no Nomad Capitalist team. We've got about 65 people that work here now. It was me and, uh, I don't know, maybe one or two other people and they weren't really focused on uh, handling the complex and uh, big stack of paperwork that comes with citizenship by investment. So my initial approach was, I'm going to get citizenship in, in Dominica. Because uh, it was, way back then, one of the only two programs uh, in the Caribbean. And it was substantially cheaper than St. Kitts and Nevis. I said, okay, I'll, I don't need the more expensive one. I'll get the cheaper one. Well, me on my own, as an entrepreneur who just likes to see the result, got frustrated by all the paperwork. I was traveling all over the place. I had to order documents from the U.S. Uh, and I just decided, hey, is there some easier passport I can get? They said, well, yeah, there's this passport in the African country of the Comoros. I said, okay, that seems interesting. And it's basically going to be free. And I said, okay, this will be something unique. I'll try it out. At the time, I was still a U.S. citizen. And hey, I mean, if anyone asks, well, why are you Comorian? I can just point to, hey, there's this law. If you donate $45,000, they give you a Comorian passport. Uh, went through the process, got the Comorian passport. It was certainly more straightforward. Uh, they still do a background check. You still have to do fingerprints, all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, I went to Dubai, did the final interview at Biometrics, and they ran me through all the systems. And uh, a matter of uh, a month or two later, got a knock on the door with DHL, here is your passport. I ended up using that passport to, to travel to a couple of different countries. I got one visa in it. Uh, I never thought I was going to be traveling all over the place. But what's interesting about African passports, a lot of them, uh, you can go to countries like Malaysia, for example. We have Nomad Capitalist Live, our annual event in Malaysia uh, this year because it is one of the most flexible visa policies in the world. And we want Nomad Capitalist Live to attract not just Americans, not just Europeans, but we had a lot of people at our first event in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, uh, from all over the place that might not have been able to get a visa to go to some other countries. We could have done the event uh, that you can go to. Singapore, actually, is very open. Uh, interestingly enough, wealthier countries in places like Eastern Europe sometimes can't go uh, to Singapore without a visa, but a number of African nationalities can. Uh, and I think I did go to Singapore once, and they just looked at the list. Is this on the list? Okay, it says 30 days. In you go, because Singapore is what I call a non-judgmental country. Uh, it's, you're either on the list or you're not. They don't get into, like, why do you have this? What are your reasons? Uh, it's just, hey, okay, Comorians get 30 days. Come on in. So African passports aren't going to be great for visa-free travel. There are only two of them, actually, out of all the like, 54 countries in Africa that can go to Europe's Schengen area. That's Mauritius and the Seychelles. If you're looking for a tax-friendly but not tax-free place to live, uh, there's a chance if you live in Mauritius, you could get a passport in a matter of as little as a couple of years. So that's one place that, that might be on your radar if you're looking to relocate for taxes and get a second passport. And it's a pretty unique second passport because like, who's really worried about Mauritius? Uh, but outside of those two, the travel is not great. There will be pockets where if you're more focused on Asia, you'll have a better time using the passport. Uh, if you're focused on Europe, most African passports are just totally not good for travel. And so you would say, well, why would you want a passport that you can't travel to many places on? Well, number one, you already have a great passport you can travel to many places on, and you want something that's different. We sometimes see clients who, you know, they're American, 
and their dad was British, they're getting their British passport. I'm all for it. 99% of the time, get any second passport you can. But that's not very diversified. We have people who are American and Canadian uh, as well. Great. <laughs> to me, the best diversification there is when you get sick of living in the, uh, outside of the United States as an American and dealing with all the forms and all the regulations and all the problems and all the taxes, you can just say, that's great. I'm going to get rid of the U.S. one and just be Canadian. Uh, and so for me, for most Westerners, getting an African passport is a level of diversification. Now, the Comoros program that I mentioned uh, was canceled a number of years ago. Uh, many of these programs do come and go, and so if one comes up and you like it, you want to take advantage of it. We do have a full-time researcher based in Africa that is researching other options. I know for a fact that there are a couple of countries that would grant citizenship to investors. Uh, and so that's something that we're always working on for our clients, is finding more interesting and very legal. Important to be legal. Don't just go to Mexico and hand a guy an envelope and get some passport they just printed off uh, in the printer. That does not mean you're a citizen. It means you have a passport, and some of those folks have gotten in trouble. But legal ways to get a second passport, uh, we're investing in all over the world, but including one person in Africa, because I think this is worthwhile. Let's talk about a couple of reasons why you might want it. Um, the first one is as a backup plan. One thing that I find interesting, because I watch news all over the world, is that a lot of African countries are tired of being told what to do by the West. If you look at parts of West Africa, uh, they are still, their economy is somewhat controlled by what happens in France and what France wants to do. And they're tired of it. Now, obviously, that has sometimes come out in some pretty violent ways, like you see the coup belt. Uh, some of those countries are, are kind of pushing back, they would argue, on what's happening in France. Not a big fan of coups, not saying that's the most stable place to invest, let alone be a citizen, uh, let alone live. But I do think as a whole, when you look at deeper into the story of, you know, why has Africa gotten more interested in working with China over the last, you know, couple of decades, it's because they say, when the Americans come, we get a lecture. When the Chinese come, we get a hospital, right? You can say America first. Well, they're saying Rwanda first, Cameroon first, Equatorial Guinea first. I mean, they want their country to be first. And if they're just like, hey, we've been treated by this one country that was for a long time the kind of one superpower in the world as disposable, now there's some other superpower that actually like, gives us stuff like, yeah, we're going to go with them. And so I think what we're seeing is in a number of different fronts, whether some of the, you know, sometimes it is coming out in, um, you know, less than ideal ways. But I think long term, you're going to see Africa that wants to stand more on its feet. There's a general trend of we don't want aid. We want to actually do business. And you can argue that some of those countries won't do well under that method. But there's a general thing of leave us, you know, let us do it our way. We don't want to be, you know, kind of this neo-colonial uh, approach. And so what do you get from that? Well, you get very different uh, approach to uh, the world. You know, during uh, the pandemic, there were people saying, well, there's nowhere to go, which is hogwash. I was traveling all over the world with my residences and passports and homes around the world. But we had a number of people say, oh yeah, I live in Tanzania, or I live here, I live there. And, you know, there's just not the desire to control people the same way. And so if you're one of those people who's saying, you know, pandemic or World Economic Forum or any place like there's going to be nowhere to go one day, well, Africa will be, I think, for some people, the final frontier. I think there'll be other final frontiers in Eastern Europe, um, Central America, parts of South America, potentially. But I think it's just a totally different approach with the way Africa is trying to go. Obviously, Africa as a continent is, is very diverse. But there will be a number of countries that are just like, we don't want to do what they're doing. We want to do things differently. And so some of those countries might become something better. Uh, Rwanda is noted as a clean, safe place. And there's a potential there. Will it be the next Singapore? I don't think any country will be the next Singapore because there was much less competition when Singapore became, quote unquote, Singapore. But as a backup plan, it wouldn't be the worst thing to have. Let's talk about investment opportunities. Uh, Nigeria's stock market this January is up about 40% uh, in one month. There are investment opportunities, and sometimes that is easier uh, when you are a citizen. We've worked with business owners from people who go down to Africa or people who are natively from Africa. It's just easier to start things. Uh, now, in some countries, there is obviously more bureaucracy, but like once you open the ice cream parlor or the coffee shop, you can scale that very fast. I mean, I talk to guys you know, cement factories. I mean, just really simple stuff. They make huge returns. 
And so obviously some local knowledge is important, but sometimes being a citizen is important. I've, I've talked to a couple of people over the years, including a couple of friends, who've gotten local citizenships to be able to be on equal footing uh, in the country in terms of doing business. Uh, one person even changed their name because they thought, hey, on the paperwork, I'll look like I'm a local. And so I don't think real estate is often a play. Like people often say, hey, if I want to diversify my cash, let me go buy real estate. I think a lot of real estate in parts of Africa is overpriced because of the income inequality. I do see income inequality in Africa actually being reduced. You're seeing a growing middle class in a number of countries. Uh, but if you wanted to buy real estate, land, for example, I mean, that's going to be easier to do as a citizen. Now, obviously, you're not a citizen of all of Africa. You're a citizen of that one country. However, you are seeing more efforts by the African Union to kind of bring uh, you know, some unification there. And it's possible that it might be at some point like the European Union where, hey, EU citizens, citizens of other EU member states, have more privileges in you know, the other states. So you know, if, you're, if you want to buy property in Austria, it's easier if you're Spanish than if you're Canadian, for example. Um, just an example. And so I think investment opportunities are easier. Obviously, there's a psychological effect of like, once you start thinking internationally, you just kind of keep going down that road. And so getting a passport, opening a bank account can sometimes be the conduit to just kind of opening up beyond your borders. But I think investment opportunities uh, are easier. Travel opportunities, as we talked about, um, African countries are generally not the best for visa-free travel. Uh, Jim Rogers, who spoke at the last Nomad Capitalist Live, uh, talked, you know, he wrote in, in his book, Adventure Capitalist, about going through in his bike through all the different countries. I mean, some of them are difficult to get into. Obviously, you know, having an African passport, I mean, there's generally blocks. I mean, I think the Eastern African ones often have pretty good visa-free travel amongst each other. West Africa, they've got the Union ECOWAS, where again, there was talk recently about uh, why are we, uh, you know, doing so much with the West. And so you're not going to be able to travel that many places. You might be opening up more opportunities within Africa. Do I see great visa-free travel on the horizon for these countries? No. But I think that, you know, could you get a residence permit on some of these? Sure. Keep in mind, by the way, um, you know, there's countries, Cape Verde, that's not, you know, known as kind of a deep African country. I mean, I'm not saying go get a passport in the Congo, for example. But there are countries where it is maybe not known as being... Uh, you know, as much part of the African continent. And you could easily go and you could get a residence permit that. You could, you could just keep the passport in your back pocket and know that you have maybe future travel opportunities, future investment opportunities, and a backup plan that's entirely different. Listen, maybe times get tough. I mean, there's probably worse places to move than a beautiful island in the middle of the ocean, like a place like Cape Verde. Uh, the Comoros certainly is not that well developed, but it's a pretty place. Uh, and what they're talking about with Africa, and, the, and again, the African Union is opening up visa-free travel uh, within the entire union. And so, hey, if Mauritius is part of that, uh, you might you know, have an easier time. Now, Mauritius has a b very liberal visa policy, but would there be some in the future, some abilities just to go and have an easier ability to live in those countries? And so if you had a passport, would at some point in the future that open up other places to invest, to reside, uh, et cetera, as you see more, more unification of these countries? So uh, if you want to do this, uh, obviously, this is something that we spend a lot of time researching, not just in Africa, but all around the world. If you just Google second passports, you're going to find a lot of people who have five Caribbean passports to sell you. Their goal is just to jam one down your throat, make a commission, and move on to the next guy. Uh, what we do is we have a whole team of R&D people. We're always looking for unique opportunities. We're very focused on doing things the right way. Um, we pass on deals that seem weird. Um, and there are some of those in Africa. There was one in, in Hong Kong a number of years ago. You could be a citizen of the Gambia for like 20 grand. Uh, you don't want to do that kind of thing. But we have at Nomad Capitalist a whole team of R&D people, a whole team of strategy people, and I think a very unique approach that people often say they have, a holistic approach, uh, but we really have millions of dollars invested in the R&D to be able to help you figure out what passports to get. Maybe an African passport should be one of them. Maybe it should be your second passport. Maybe it should be your fourth passport. Maybe there's just something that you want to invest in in Africa and you don't need a passport. There's any number of things, but we, I think, are the true global thinkers here. And if you want to work with us and figure out how to build a passport and asset protection plan, you go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply. We'd be happy to help you. I think there's a lot of different nuances to this. So where can you go and get a passport in Africa? There's not a lot of opportunities. Even what's called citizenship by descent can be difficult if you don't have uh, even if you have roots there. We have had a few clients that got you know, citizenship in Sierra Leone, I think, if you can prove some kind of connection there. Uh, some African countries are trying to be bigger at you know, citizenship by descent. You had ancestors from there at some point. Uh, naturalization works in African countries, but it's usually longer, and some of the countries don't allow dual citizenship. 
Egypt has a citizenship by investment program. That's where you just go and unlike the Caribbean where you donate money, in Egypt you can buy property, $300,000, you get a passport in a matter of months. That's maybe a different part of Africa, more the North Africa, Middle East region. Uh, but again, I mean, that could be part of a more unified Africa in the future. You buy a property, some of the cheapest property in the world is in Cairo, big city. Uh, there could be some potential there. And potentially you could get paid to get that passport if you work with someone like Nomad Capitalist that helps you find an actual good deal and not some overpriced real estate. You might actually make a profit on that and get a passport for free for your trouble. Uh, Namibia is a livable place. A lot of people of German ancestry have gone to uh, Namibia. They have a very uh, relatively uncompetitive golden visa program. You can go down and move there uh, and work towards citizenship. That's probably not interesting for most people. Uh, there are programs that we're working on uh, like Cape Verde, Rwanda, Zambia. There have been citizenship offers in the past for uh, people who've invested or moved their farm. Um, South Africa is a place that maybe people are more familiar with, but there's a, a great creep towards more taxes and more chasing people down for taxes that I wouldn't want to be a part of. Uh, but there's all, you know, obviously Africa is a very diverse continent, and so there's different parts of the region. Obviously, there's a few, you know, countries that are going to be uh, quite difficult. If you have to tell your banker, hey, I'm Nigerian now, uh, a lot of them, unfortunately, might look at you the wrong way. Uh, but that doesn't mean there's not plenty of countries in Africa that could be interesting. And so uh, these are the kinds of opportunities that you might look at. Again, you know, is, this, is this the average person from the West's second passport? Probably not. But for someone who's more of that Jim Rogers adventure capitalist, I think it could be interesting to add to a diversified passport portfolio. And that's what we help our clients build. That's also what we talk about at our annual event called Nomad Capitalist Live. It is coming up this year in Kuala Lumpur. And so if you want to be a client, you go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply. We'll help you uh, build a passport portfolio, protect your assets. If you just want to learn about this stuff, you go to nomadcapitalist.com slash live. We've got our annual live event. You don't have to have any certain kind of income, any certain kind of net worth. You just want to learn about all the R&D that we do, Africa and Europe and Latin America. We've got more people from our diverse team coming than ever. We've got speakers from, I think, like a couple dozen countries. We have people talking about investing in Africa specifically, and they're doing it, and you can meet them and learn from them. It's an event for doers who want to think globally. Nomadcapitalist.com slash live for that, and you can talk more about this stuff as well. But I think Africa... Uh, for me, interesting continent to watch out.